Hi, everyone, and welcome to No Kill in Motion. I'm here today with Shirley Marsh from Yes Biscuit Blog, Alan Rosenberg from the New Jersey Animal Observer, and Aubrey Cavanaugh from No Kill Huntsville. I'm David Smith from No Kill Colorado. So we're talking today about community cats. There seems to be a love-hate position out there in the world. Uh, some people are adamant about TNR and SNR, and there are a lot of local governments who really fight back against this and other advocates that actually don't agree with it. You know, what's the story with these positions? You know, we, we see uh, there's some nativist arguments um, that go to this. Sometimes I actually see it uh, very parallel to almost, uh, you know, systemic racism, things that we're seeing in politics today about marginalized groups. Um, but there's, there's just so many different facets of this. So I'm just going to kind of open it up and, uh, Alan, I'm going to start with you. I know that actually you do a lot of work with cats in New Jersey. Um, what, what do you see out there and, and, and what do you think is the problem with getting people to understand that this is actually a really good practice? Well, I think the vast majority of people agree with TNR, um, you know, if you, if you look at it, it's almost always very popular. Um, from a municipal point of view, it's a no brainer because it reduces taxes, costs and taxes. Ultimately, I think the real problem is a small subset in the um, environmental community that have this idyllic view of the world. And I get it because, you know, before I got into shelter reform, I was very much into wildlife issues. And it, it seems like they, a lot of these people um, believe that cats are quote unquote non-native and therefore are worthless and should be eradicated like a, like a disease. And the reality is number one, a lot of their studies about cat predation are false. Uh, they're, they're based on islands, which are not um, applicable to continental areas like the United States. Um, a lot of the animal, a lot of the birds that cats end up killing are at cat birds that would have died anyway. They're injured, um, you know, sick, so they wouldn't, uh, you know, reproduce, et cetera, et cetera, for the population. So bottom line is, um, I think there's a small subset of people that have undue influence, particularly these conservation groups. And then there's these other people that just don't like cats. You know, they're cat haters and they call and complain. And sometimes it's easier for municipalities to respond to those calls. And, and remove the cats, but of course it doesn't solve the problem because new cats come in and that's why you need TNR or SNR to, to solve it on a long-term basis. Shirley, what, what has been your experience with TNR and SNR and how the public views it, how, how local governments view it? Well, I, I agree with Alan. Uh, it is generally popular, I think, with the public. Um, cats are extremely popular as pets with the public. So um, we have that on our side, but where I see uh, just heavy, heavy resistance is, um, as Alan mentioned, the wildlife community, scientists in the wildlife community, especially, um, they just continually state that TNR doesn't work. And when you try to push back and say, well, well, uh, you know, these studies have found that it does, or or even when you look at studies that have been done where they have in fact killed uh, the feral cats and then they find that the population is not only not decreased, it's actually increased. And, and even those studies, the scientists will come back and say, well, we need to kill more. We need to give us more money. We, you know, we've got to just um, keep killing more. And um, that attitude, you know, that 
the only good cat is a dead cat and, and these kind of things. It's just, um, it's very discouraging because in other aspects of um, animal related work, these same people are very sensible and will look at literature that, that um, maybe would influence their thinking or change their mind. Um, that's the whole nature of science is about learning and changing their positions. And um, it seems like with cats, that just often doesn't happen. I always point out, and uh, you know, for our listeners, <clears throat> my favorite uh, website on this is Vox Felina. I'm, I'm sure all of you have probably been there one time or another. I absolutely adore that site. I adore the way uh, they look at the data and the way they present it. And quite, quite frankly, I think uh, Alan, you brought it. They debunked most of it. In fact, from the scientists that actually did the study, said that's not quite what we said. Something you know, a lot of the scientists actually said that's not what I was actually putting forward, um, and the or the sample wasn't the right size or something like that. So I just want to throw out Voxfalina. If you're interested in this subject, please go out there and check it out. Aubrey, what about TNRS and R? What's going out there in the community? Well, let, let me say one thing real quick because we had a comment in one of our earlier panel discussions. I want to make clear TNR stands for trap, neuter, and return, and SNR stands for shelter, neuter, and return. And both of these are programs that actually keep us from just summarily rounding up and destroying cats in shelters. Um, when a cat is in a shelter, it's really difficult to figure out what is a pet cat who is just freaked out, and what is a cat that came from outside that has never really been socialized to people. So both of these programs are intended to keep cats alive, to, and to actually reduce populations and to do so humanely. And it's just seen as a better way to spend money and it, and it works. I mean, I'm sure all of us have TNR stories. I mean, we do TNR at the office where I work and we started about 10 years ago and we had a population of maybe about a dozen cats and we're down to, I think probably two or three at this point. And even when we're not sure um, who we're dealing with, it still works to our advantage. Um, when, when, we, when we do these programs, what we do is we feed these cats 365 days a year. And yes, that includes every holiday. They have housing, it's insulated, so they have a place to go that's safe. So even when we've got to the point where we think that we've gotten rid of our original population, just through, when I say gotten rid of, I just mean through attrition. I mean, eventually these cats die after a period of years. They're, most of them are very healthy. That's how they've survived outside. Um, we had a, a thing recently where we had a cat and her kittens show up. They probably came from a local housing area. Um, we live near some government housing, but because we were feeding, they were attracted to the feeding station and we were able to trap all three. And all three of those are probably going to go into great homes. If we had not been doing a TNR program, we would not been able to, to we wouldn't have been able to help these cats. So um, for me, it's a win-win. We're helping cats that are lost, that maybe can't get their, their way back home. We're spaying, neutering, we're, we're vaccinating. And if they're truly feral and they're not social to people, um, they do get put back out in their habitat, but otherwise they just go into great homes. So for me, it's just a win-win. Going to what Alan and Shirley said, I almost feel like this is the issue. It's kind of like the issue related to pit bull type dogs. There are some people that are just so dead set in their thinking that there is no conversation to be had. I mean, it truly is a form of cognitive dissonance where related to almost everything else, like Shirley said, I mean, they can see the logic and they can follow the science, but for some reason, when it has to do with cats, they have this incredible blind spot and it doesn't matter what you say or how you debunk what has been said, they, they just can't hear it. And that, that's unfortunate. And when we share this panel discussion, I'll, I'll put up the link to Fox Felina. I'm also gonna put up a link to, um, there was a keynote speaker uh, for Maddie's Fund. It was back, um, I think it was, hold on just a sec. It was part of the Million Cat Challenge and um, Kate Hurley, um, who was with the UC Davis um, Correct Shelter Medicine Program. She did a keynote speech in May of 2019 where she talked about rethinking the shelter's role regarding cats. And it's a, it's a great video. I mean, prior to watching that, I didn't realize, I think that a lot of people see cats outside and they presume that they're all pet cats. Um, no, they're not all pet cats who are lost. Some of them, that's their habitat they're already out there. So this answer of, oh, let's just destroy them all. 
that would be similar to saying, well, let's just destroy all the raccoons or let's just destroy all the possum. I mean, they're already out there. So it's not like you can do some clean sweep, but I'll share the link for that one too, because that keynote speech is really great. I, you know, made me think of two things. I think I can only think of one now. <laughs> you said two things, but um, the, you know, the nativism thing for me cracks me up because it's the species that's saying we need to kill them, which I think is the most invasive species on the planet, right? It's us. I, 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 and that, that, that hypocritical kind of view just, it, it, it just boggles my mind. But um, we're out of time. That was a great discussion. Thank you all. Again, uh, I was here with Shirley Marsh from Yes Biscuit, Alan Roseberg from New Jersey Animal Observer, Aubrey Cavanaugh from No Kill Huntsville. I'm David Smith from No Kill Colorado. This is No Kill in Motion. Thanks for joining us today.